Hello, I'm Megan Peters, the Community Manager at Mashable. I'm thrilled to introduce Tony Bates. Tony is the Chief Executive Officer at Skype, where he is responsible for overseeing the company's direction and strategy, and ultimately its performance. We're excited to have him here today to show us how Skype is being used to transform classrooms throughout the world. Please join me in welcoming Tony to the stage. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon and uh, good morning and maybe good evening to everyone out there who's hopefully watching this streaming. Uh, this is a global event, obviously, we have here. Firstly, I want to just take a couple of moments and, and really say what an honor it is for me to be here to give you a chance um, to hear maybe a slightly different side of Skype and really to be with some of the, the major social change agents out there. And I hope if you take something away from this that you see that not just about Skype, that technology technology itself can really start to transform the way we think about education uh, and particularly in the case of what we're going to talk about how we can really start to rethink the classroom um, but before I start uh, and it's a little hard to see I just want to do a quick audience participation poll hands up if you, you you've heard of Skype and you know what Skype is <laughs> that's good uh, hands up if you use Skype okay when it's hard to tell in this uh, but it went down only a little bit one thing I always like to check, hands up if any of you actually pay for Skype. There we go. <laughs> About 10%. We thank you for that. Uh, but more importantly, <laughs> uh, we thank that uh, you use Skype. And many of you have wonderful stories in your own life. But the story I'm going to tell today is, is, I think, very compelling and um, something that really took me by surprise. I joined Skype only a year ago. I took over as CEO. Uh, and when I started to hear the stories from our employees, and around the world as I talk to people, it was clear there was a big phenomena going on around education and the classroom. So let me just kind of walk through briefly and talk to you, what does Skype mean? When we think about not just the brand and the products uh, and the services that we deliver, we like to think about basically three major things. And I'm going to sort of give you some examples. Global, universal basically means that we want to have Skype as a piece of technology, a simple piece of technology that you download on the web be as accessible as we can make it on as many different devices, be that laptops, desktops, smartphones. Uh, we have it on some of the major TVs today. It also needs to be useful. It needs to solve problems in everyone's life. But more importantly, and perhaps the thing that we, we love the most, is it needs to create wonderful moments. It needs to create a personalized experience. We often think of, of Skype as sort of extending that virtual kitchen table that many of you would know where your family comes together or maybe you have a party, everyone congregates in the kitchen around the table. That's what Skype stands for. Now when we think about Universal, I want to give you an example here of something that happened where people started to use Skype uh, as a way um, to further their education. This is actually on the left here you see a classroom in the UK and on the right, this is the Maasai tribe, actually uh, in Tanzania in this case. They, they cross uh, Kenya and Tanzania. And they were actually able to do their study around the Maasai tribe. And by the way, as a Brit, I also remember doing this exact same class about the Maasai tribe, but I didn't have the advantage of actually being able to reach out and almost virtually touch uh, the tribe and talk and interact with them. This class was able to do that because of the universal nature. We actually, they did a video conference. In this case, it was with a mobile phone in Tanzania. And obviously, as you can see there, uh, using desktops uh, in, the, in the British class. An amazing experience. Uh, only brought about by the universal nature of what we're able to do. Um, useful. Uh, we had some incredible cases of this, but the one that uh, I really like, uh, we had a teacher, her name is Cherry McInnes. Uh, she's in Maine, and she started to create a series for her students where she could bring in actresses and politicians and guest lecturers. I don't know how she had so much access, but I don't know if you can notice in this particular, this is a, real, uh, a photograph of a real live event. That's actually the former first lady uh, a Barbara Bush right there. Um, and that type of experience would be almost impossible even if you had the access, the chance that you could schedule someone, the chance that you could bring in someone as, as well known, as profound, and have that experience in the class couldn't really happen unless you had the power of Skype. Think of how you could extend this though in uh, parent participation. It doesn't have to necessarily be a famous person, it could be someone who's got a skill, they would love to come in and teach a little bit in the classroom, but they're so busy, so they could just do this from their office in the middle of the day 
and get that type of interaction. So really useful, really stretching the, the education process and making sure that folks get a different side uh, of, of, of expertise that they may just not get in their day-to-day -day classrooms. Uh, wonderful. Wonderful for many people at Skype is about their own family life. Uh, many people that use Skype kind of transcend if you think lifespan, we have people that can't be there when life is given, when a baby is born. This happens a lot with overseas uh, people uh, where they actually watch their baby being born remotely back in the, in, in the US or in the UK and one of the, um, the countries where they just can't get to. Uh, we have unfortunately people that get to see their last rites uh, because they can't be there when someone's going to pass away. Uh, and so it creates this ability for us to cross age groups, cross geographies, but also cross cultures. This is an example uh, of a teacher in Groton, Massachusetts, who wanted to create a pen pal uh, program. Uh, think of it as sort of a Skype pen pal program uh, with young girls in Afghanistan uh, to help them understand the differences in culture, break down some of maybe the prejudices and the biases that you get to see. And we were able to do that using Skype. And these uh, sixth graders in this case started interacting on a regular basis. Now they may never be able to do an exchange program, but they get as close as you possibly can to start to know their buddy on the other side, interact with them in an immersive way. And this was done through the power of video. And it's very simple, uh, easy to do. So rich, wonderful experiences that really could never take place thousands of miles away from each other. Now this phenomena at Skype has been going on for many, many years, it turns out. People have been finding each other and they've been creating uh, ways to use the power of Skype in the educational process. Uh, it's almost like a grassroots movement had been there. People have been setting up sort of uh, rudimentary wikis, different websites and sharing best practices. Uh, and some of the, the focus had been really saying, what can we do? How can we share the way we use Skype? How can we kind of let other people see that it's pretty easy, it's pretty simple, you don't need too much equipment and you can create these lasting forever uh, educational experiences. Teachers can take their students to places they never imagined they could be there before. And so things started to, to actually pop up, uh, things that weren't driven by Skype, things that just happened virally, power of social media. This is a great example. Uh, around the world with 80 schools was a project that was started. Another project that was started by someone um, was Skype in the classroom as a directory, so people would have a directory of folks that they could go to. But we really felt uh, that it was time to take this to the next level. And when I joined and I heard some of these stories, it felt like we as Skype should really start to drive this idea of moving from grassroots, Skype in the classroom, and making Skype in the classroom really come to life. So we created a community, if you like, driven out of the top level of the Skype.com homepage. And for those of you who, who may not be familiar, Skype.com uh, primarily is the place you would generally go to download your free software, your piece of technology. Uh, we have 750,000 new registered users every day, close to a million downloads of people either upgrading or taking the software for the first time. So we have a great place for people to come, a great audience who already is looking to do something, but why couldn't we extend that into the education vertical? So we started the Skype in the Classroom initiative just six months ago, and it's a forum where you can come together. It's called education.skype.com, as you can see. And what's amazing about it, what truly blew me away, uh, wasn't just that teachers signed up. Uh, and you can see you have over 16,300 uh, uh, 434 teachers when I took this snapshot. I know when I just checked we had another 150 teachers and I only took this snapshot last night. So it's growing very, very quickly, the momentum's there. And we set it up in, in such a way that it wasn't just about people coming together. We wanted to have an idea that there'd be projects where people would work together. They would share their educational processes, maybe even share a class. We have a great example of a teacher here in New York who's now actually teaching cross town two classes at once because they're struggling with re uh, teaching resource within that uh, school. And we also wanted to create a notion of resources. A resource could be an expert, like we had the, or uh, someone a great speaker who would donate a little bit of their time and come into that. And it's really taken off. It's taken off so dramatically from our perspective that it's a global phenomenon for us. Uh, you can see here, hopefully you can see this out there, 
just where people are signing up all across the world from, from Australia to Africa to Far East all the way into um, the US, Latin America, so completely gro global in its approach and, and growing very, very rapidly. The other thing that we found was very interesting was that, as many of you know, lots of people want to help teach, but language is sometimes a challenge. And so the language embracement and how we're trying to sort of help encourage folks to cross boundaries, teach maybe English as a second language to countries where they really want to have that English but they don't have the access is becoming huge. So we have 60 languages represented within the program, everything from Swahili to Serbo-Croatian to English to French to Thai. Every one of the major languages of any large population is now represented and there's teachers there willing to help teach people in other countries. So huge global phenomena for us. So as a kind of quick dashboard for you, first six months have been amazing for us. Huge amount of focus in terms of the teachers. I'll point you to one statistic that isn't obvious perhaps when you first look at it. There's a, the number here, it says 11,000 uh, contact requests sent between members since launch. That's really the power of participation. That's when someone is using Skype, they find someone on the other side and say, hey, I want to start a project. I want to work with you together. I want to further that education experience uh, with you. So start to form communities. Many examples of this, everything from a, an architectural professor in the Midwest is now teaching a class down in Chile about earthquake structures where they just went through that for new students in the university. Simple examples of where they connected, found a class that made sense to teach together and moved on from there. 171 countries we're at. Skype as a footprint is in 180 countries. So we've got about nine countries to go before we've essentially emulated what we do on the Skype service for uh, Skype in the classroom. Now there's so many great stories uh, and if you go there I, I would urge you to. I would employ you to have a look at some of these stories. But here's one that really stands out for me. This is a story about a kindergarten teacher. And the teacher was trying to teach the students that it's very important to have order in the classroom and there's time for play and there's time to get things done and there's time to clear up. And she was sort of struggling what analogy she would use. And the one she came up with was that's how a beehive works. Now, to translate that to the kids and really make that real, she reached out into the Skype for Classroom community and asked if anyone knew of a beekeeper who was willing to give their time. And this beekeeper signed up and essentially brought the beehive into the classroom. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm not sure I would let my four or five-year-old have the bees in the classroom, but with Skype, you don't need to do that. You make the virtual deal with the fact that you can't do the physical. You break down that barrier of communication and you create this experience that frankly probably couldn't be done without this type of technology. Wonderful experience, changing the way the, the students engage in the class probably forever. Now, it's great for me to talk about it, uh, but it's also great when you hear about teachers and you see their enthusiasm. So I put together a little short video that I hope you'll enjoy of some of the great experiences that our teachers and educators have had, so enjoy. I got on Skype um, for the classroom and I started looking and after seriously one minute, I found a teacher who was also looking for somebody to do a weather project with, um, which was awesome. So I. Um, connected with her right away and then I also put on um, my profile that I was looking for other teachers to do a weather project with and that same day I got five teachers who are interested um, all over the world. And one of the things my fourth graders are working on is elapsed times. So we're able to figure out uh, how many hours the difference was between here in Indianapolis, Indiana, and Dubai. So We've been partnering with a middle school in India, just outside Delhi. And uh, what we've done thus far is um, I visited their classroom and I taught a mini lesson to their students on world populations. And then our plans are to have some of their teachers visit uh, classrooms here in Houston. It's a growing city in the world. So that was really interesting for us to connect with students in Dhaka and Bangladesh. And, and via Skype in the classroom, we were able to do that. 
And so now that Skype in the Classroom is here, it's really exciting because I don't have to um, work quite as hard to get experts because now there's this lovely database that um, has already built in interested people. Um, so not only experts in the field, but other classroom teachers for collaboration. So. to connect with teachers and find teachers in other places in the world that you would never ever have known anything about if you didn't have this chance to do it like that. But one of my favorite ones uh, was when we uh, Skyped as an entire middle school uh, to Dr. Tim White, um, who's a, uh, let me get this right, paleoanthropologist. And he's really an expert in this field. It was a huge success in our city. Um, we were invited to present the project in the town hall. And so we tried to inspire other teachers of English and Spanish to do the same. Oh, so I, I don't know about you, but... Pretty amazing in such a short period of time. But you know, it's great to hear some of the great stories. It's great to see some video. But how about with the power of Skype, we actually take you uh, to a classroom. So right now, we're going to actually Skype into the Oliver Street School in Newark, New Jersey. And hopefully, if everything goes well, here we go. Hi. So, uh, hello out there. Um, as it turns out, just because of the way things are set up, we can see, we can see them. It's not so easy for them to see us. But uh, I'm here with you uh, today. The teacher is uh, Mr. Alan Yushrenko. And this is, I think, your sixth grade class, right? So hi, hi out there. Can you hear us? Yep, yep, loud and clear. Good. Can you hear me? So um, thanks for joining us. Can you tell us a little bit about what you've learned uh, using Skype and how it's uh, shaped maybe the way you think about teaching? Uh, sure. Uh, well, I, I teach a, a STEM program over here at Oliver. So it's a science, technology, engineering, and math program. And uh, I feel my main role is to just inspire students to want to pursue careers in education. Uh, I'm sorry, in science and technology. And the best way to do that is to expose them to people that work in the field, and, and Skype has given us you know, countless opportunities to have them communicate with some of the experts. Uh, and every time they see anything on the screen, they're always captivated. So it's a very easy way to keep their attention. Yeah, that's fantastic. Now, how about from a student's point of view? I think Giovanna was going to say a little bit what you think of Skype and how you use it. Um, well, recently we've um, had a Skype conversation with Fred Hansen at the NYU Engineering Laboratory, uh, sorry, facility, um, and it was really nice. I think the whole class enjoyed it, and we plan on doing that way often. That's fantastic. Um, <laughs> I'd love to spend as much, you know, as more time on this as we could, but it's really amazing when you see students and see the energy and how excited they are. And I, I thank you for using Skype, and I hope that you guys continue to use it in the future. And we'll be sure to check in um, with future projects. So thank you for taking the time to join us, and you all look so fantastic. Hey, thanks for this opportunity to uh, share our experience. Yeah, thank you. So I want to leave you with just one last thing. Um, I think we're at a, a moment in time where it isn't just about Skype. I think it's about how technology has an opportunity for us to really change the way people think about education, whether it's cross-culturally to break down maybe some of the, uh, the way people think about different countries, whether it's the ability um, to study, say, the Vietnam War in a different way so you can actually share with a veteran and get more of that deep experience. So many opportunities. I think what we have here, simply and easily put, is the start of what I think is the classroom of the future. And that classroom of the future doesn't have to be dictated by a company. It happens organically. It happens virally through the use of technology. Skype's goal, simply put, is to reach a billion endpoints. So if we can get to that goal, and right now we're getting close, we're at 170 million active users who use the product. 
every single month on a monthly basis and it's growing very rapidly why couldn't we why couldn't we as a community as an organization globally who's trying to draw, drive social change trying to educate more people try and do that on less resources perhaps than we've ever had before why can't we get to a million connected classrooms it's simple it's easy it's universal it creates useful but more importantly incredibly wonderful experiences for our pupils and our teachers and they're the ones who need it the most thank you very much